Hi, Cougar friends. I thought that I might try to read a chapter book for those of you who would rather hear a chapter book than all the picture books. But feel free to go back and look at the picture books too because they're fun. So today, the story I'm gonna read is Trapped in a Video Game by Dustin Brady. Chapter one, Boogers and Blasters, funny title. Jesse, come over now. You're not going to believe this. That was the text that ruined my life. I know, I know. It doesn't sound like a life ruiner, especially because the text sender, my friend Eric, says, you're not going to believe this about the world's most believable things. Just in the past month, he's told me that I wouldn't believe a piece of toast that looked exactly like Darth Vader. It looked exactly like a burnt piece of toast. A sweet trick he learned on his bike, riding for literally one half of one second without holding onto the handlebars. And a really big booger. That one was actually pretty impressive. I ignored the text for a little bit because nothing makes Eric talk faster than silence. When he didn't write back after five minutes, I finally replied, What is it? No response. Are you going to tell me or what? Nothing. This better not be another booger. Nope. Five more minutes passed and I sighed. Fine. Eric was going to win this one, but only because looking at his dumb booger would be more fun than this math homework. I closed my book, put on my jacket, and walked across the street to Eric's house. The door was open, so I let myself in and walked down to the basement. All right, let's see it, I said as I reached the bottom of the stairs. No booger, also no Eric. Come on, I called out. I wandered into the laundry room, room where the dirty clothes should be. I walked upstairs into Eric's room where the dirty clothes real actually were. I checked behind all the doors, inside all the closets, and under all the beds. No booger, no Eric. I couldn't believe it. Ever since Eric's family moved into the house across the street from mine in the first grade, his favorite activity had been playing practical jokes on me. I appreciate a good practical jo joke as much as the next guy. Unfortunately, none of Eric's practical jokes are good because he's so impatient. He ruins every joke before it even begins. I don't know how many sleepovers I've been to where Eric has attempted to dip a sleeping friend's finger into warm water, only to have the water dumped over his head by the victim who had had his eyes closed for less than 30 seconds. So on one hand, I had to admire Eric's commitment to this particular joke. On the other hand, it may have been his dumbest yet. Back in the basement, I decided I'd had enough. Okay, I yelled to an empty house. I'm going back home now. I have to finish the math homework due on Monday. Maybe you should do the same. More silence. I looked around. The only sign of life anywhere was a video game paused. Oh. More silence. I looked around. The only sign of life anywhere was a video game paused on the TV in the corner. Eric loved, the, uh, Eric loved his video games, especially the one on the screen right now. Full blast. Never heard of full blast? That's because it's not out yet. Eric got it two weeks ago from Charlie, the coolest kid in our class. To clarify, Charlie isn't the coolest kid in sixth grade because he's actually a cool kid. He's the coolest kid because his dad works for a video game company and sometimes gives Charlie's friends early copies of games to test. For the past two weeks, Eric's mouth has been going full blast about full blast. Jesse, I'm telling you, it's the greatest video game ever made. I don't care. All these aliens are trying to take over the world, and you're the only poorest person alive who can save everybody because... I don't 
care because you found one of their blasters. And once you charge it to full blast, you can, I don't care. You can start shooting. Eric never stopped trying to get me to watch him play his new game. I never went because I would rather get sprayed in the face with a fire hose full blast than watch someone else play video games. I don't hate video games. I'm sure they're fine. I've just never really had the time to sit down and play them. I walked toward the TV. I'd never heard Eric rant about a game like he ranted about this one. Maybe I should give it a chance? At the very least, it would probably beat math homework. I picked up the controller and looked at the screen. Are you sure? Yes, no. I paused for a second. Should I? What if I erased Eric's saved games? Nah, he wouldn't mind. He'd just be happy I was trying a video game. I clicked yes. The instant I did, everything went black. Not everything on the screen, everything in the room. Chapter 2. Humanity's Only Hope. You know that feeling you get when you're drinking milk while skydiving and your skydiving buddy tells a funny joke, so you laugh the milk right out of your nose and when you throw up at the same time? No, oh, that's not an experience everybody has. Well, anyways, that's exactly how I felt after clicking yes. Like I said, everything went black the second I pressed the button. I panicked and I felt around for some sort of undo. One problem, one problem. The controller was no longer in my hands. I reached back for the couch. That caused me to lose my balance and start falling into the blackness. As I never fall faster, as I fall faster, my insides start feeling like they wanted to be outside. And then I think I barfed. And then I thought, video games are the worst. And then I blacked out. When I finally opened my eyes again, I was staring at the sun, which is funny because if there's one thing that is definitely not in Eric's basement, it's the sun. I felt the ground, dirt. Okay, super weird. I closed my eyes to get my bearings, and then I opened them again to see two angry eyes two inches away, staring back. Ah! Nap time's over, maggot. And the two eyes were attached to a snarling drill sergeant who seemed just like the most furious person ever. I tried backing away. Look, I don't, this is a, this is a big, oh, okay, listen, if you just call my mom. The drill sergeant didn't seem interested in clearing things up with Mrs. Rigby. In Rigsby. Instead, he picked me up by the neck, just like a bully on TV would. Listen, maggot, I don't know how you got that blaster attached to your arm, but it's there, and it's there now, and we're going to use it. The what? Attached to my what? I looked down. A blaster attached to my arm, where my left hand should be. Ah! My screaming did nothing to stop the drill sergeant from continuing his little speech. Blast the alien scum back to wherever rock they came from. And you are, you are humanity's only hope for ah! this planet. Your mission will be long. Now, and we're, oh, your mission will be long. He stared at me angrily for a few seconds before repeating himself. Oh, wait. I don't know what happened. Gosh darn it. Chapter two, humanity's only you know that feeling you get when you're drinking milk while skydiving and your skydiving buddy tells a funny joke, so you laugh the milk out your nose and then you throw up at the same time? No? <laughs> That's not an experience that everyone has. 
Well, anyway, that's exactly how I felt after clicking yes. Like I said, everything went black the second I pressed the button. I panicked and I felt around for some sort of undo. One problem, the controller was no longer in my hands. I reached back for the couch. That caused me to lose my balance and start falling into the blackness. As I fell faster, my insides started feeling like they wanted to be outsides. And then I think I barfed. And then I thought, video games are the worst. And then I blacked out. When I finally opened my eyes again, I was staring at the sun, which is funny because if there's one thing that is definitely not in Eric's basement, it's the sun. I felt the ground, <gasps> dirt, okay, super weird. I closed my eyes to get my bearings and then I opened them again to see two angry eyes two inches away staring back. Ah! Nap time's over, maggot! The two eyes were attached to a snarling drill sergeant who seemed just like the most furious person ever. I tried backing away. Look, I don't, this is a big, uh, okay, listen, if you just call my mom. The drill sergeant, dar, sergeant didn't seem interested in clearing things up with Mrs. Rigsby. Instead, he picked me up by the neck just like a bully on TV would. Listen, maggot, I don't know how you got that blaster attached to your arm, but it's there and now we're going to use it to... The what? Attached to my what? I looked down. A blaster attached to my arm, where my left hand should be. Ah! Screaming did nothing to stop the drill sergeant, sergeant from continuing his little speech. Blast the alien scum back to whatever rock they came from. Your humanity's only hope. Ah! This planet, your mission will be long. Your mission will be difficult. Your mission will probably be deadly. But you... Ah! Ah! I continued screaming through the rest of the speech. After a few more minutes of talking about how I was probably going to die, the sergeant let me go. I sat on the ground hyperventilating and trying to tear the blaster from my arm. Over my breathing, I heard the drill sergeant start talking again. To walk around. I looked up at him. What was that? He stared angrily for a few seconds before repeating himself. Move the C-stick to walk around. I blinked a couple of times. Listen, I, I don't know what this is supposed to be, but you got to help me. He stared back. I took a few steps closer. I'm not supposed to be. Good news. Now press A to jump. I mean, good. Now press the A to jump. I squinted at him. Are you even listening to me? He didn't react. Okay, my name is Jesse Rigsby. I'm in the sixth grade, and I'm not some sort of alien slayer. I don't even believe in aliens. If we're, be if we're being honest, can you please just help me get this thing off my arm so I can go home and finish my homework, please? Press A to jump. No, I don't want to jump. Press A to jump. This is a video game thing, right? Like virtual reality, some sort of headset. I reached up to tear, tear the headset off. Instead, I bonked myself with a very real blaster stuck to my very real arm. Press A to jump. Okay, Eric. Eric Conrad, hyperactive kid about yay high. He's the one who brought me here. Have you seen, you've seen him, right? Press A to, fine. I jumped. Happy now? Well done. Now it's time to blast some aliens. Follow me. No, it is certainly not the time to blast aliens. I yelled after the drill sergeant. It's time to get back to math homework. Fractions. I'm supposed to be multiplying fractions. 
as usual, he ignored me. I finally huffed and followed him. What else could I do? He led me through an empty military base, past bow rows of barracks, to a firing range. He picked up a gun of his own, opened the gate for me, and led me into a stall. Ten yards in front of me stood a cardboard cutout of a man-sized praying mantis. This is where you'll learn how to use your blaster. I very much don't want to use my blaster. Press B to fire. Okay, that's another thing. You keep yelling at me to press all these buttons, but what am I supposed to do if I don't have a controller? I did have a controller, but it disappeared when I fell into your weird alien place. So now what? Press B to fire. You are the least helpful person ever. Press B to fire like this and he held up his rifle and shot the cardboard cutout. His gun made a little pew sound and a tiny hole appeared in the cardboard. It looked like he had shot with a pellet gun. Fine, I said as I felt around my gun for a button or a trigger. Nothing. There's no B button. Are you happy now? You can take this. At the moment, at that moment, I, re I squeezed my left hand or where my left hand should be, and the blaster on my left on my hand fired a glowing white ball. The white ball hit the cardboard and instantly vaporized it. What was that? Very good. You might save us all yet. Just then, a much larger, much scarier praying mantis cardboard popped up. Now hold B to charge your blaster. When it gets to full blast, this is full blast? I'm inside of full blast? Of course, Sergeant Sandpants wouldn't answer me. He just kept yapping away about charging and blasting and other weapons that you will discover along your journey. I attempt to leave at this point, but no matter how hard I try, I couldn't seem to climb out of the firing range stall. After half an hour, I vaporized a row of cardboard praying mantises with a machine gun, and the sergeant deemed me ready to defeat the alien scum. Oh, no, 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 I said. Just point me to Eric Conrad, please. A glowing vortex appeared behind me. You're being dispatched to the alien outpost in the Rocky Mountains. No, 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 no. Godspeed, soldier. Godspeed. The vortex got bigger. No, 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 no. I tried running away, but it was too late. I got sucked in. Whoosh! Everything disappeared again. More skydiving, milk snorting. Finally, the falling stopped. I kept my eyes closed for a second longer, praying that I'd open them to find myself back in Eric's basement. Bad news. No basement. Worst news? Lots of snow. Worst news? A praying mantis the size of a tank was charging at me. Full blast. Saving progress. Do not close book while save icon is on the page. Chapter 3. Blast, blast, squawk. I did the thing you're supposed to do when a man-eating praying mantis starts charging at you. I screamed like a girl. <coughs> the praying mantis did not slow down. I tried adding running to the mix. Ah, thud! Ah, thud! Ah, thud! Running over snow-covered rocks with a blaster strapped to your arm is harder than it looks. With the creature almost on top of me, I pulled out my last trick, screaming while curling into a tiny ball. But even that didn't work because the stupid blaster kept getting in the... Oh, wait, the blaster! At that second, I closed my eyes, reached up, and squeezed my left hand. The blaster recoiled, and I heard a shriek. I opened my eyes to see the praying mantis disappear into a ball of light. Wow, 
I almost died inside of a video game. I imagined the funeral. Here lies Jesse Rigsby of Middlefield, Ohio. He was tragedi tragically taken from us by a giant praying mantis while trying to save a video game world from fake aliens. He bravely led the resistance, which lasted for all of 10 seconds. I looked around me, snow and boulders everywhere, with a path leading deeper into the mountains ahead of me. No thanks. I turned and started walking back to find a way out of this mess. I got exactly five steps before, clunk, I hit something and fell backwards into the snow. Confused, I picked myself up and tried again. Clunk. I got up and, ex and inspected the spot further. It was open air, no different from anything else around me. I tried to put my fist through it. Clunk. Ow! I punched an invisible invis brick wall. I shook my head, then tried blasting it. <laughs> Maybe full blast, I charged the blaster and shot. Clunk. Ow! I punched an invisible rock. I shook my hand and then tried blasting it. Nothing. Full blast, I charged the blaster and shot the invisible wall from two feet away. The ball of light absorbed into the wall and disappeared. I sighed put my hand against the wall and started walking to find an opening. After five minutes of walking along, I got up and inspected the spot for, wait, what? Ow! I pinched an I punched an invisible brick wall. I shook my hand and then tried blasting it. Nothing. Maybe full blast? I charged the blaster and shot the invisible wall from two feet away. The ball of light absorbed into the wall and disappeared. I sighed, put my hand against the wall, and started walking to find an opening. After five minutes of walking along an invisible wall in the Rocky Mountains, not exactly an activity I thought I'd be doing when I woke up. I heard a noise to my left. Click, click, click. I slowly turned around. Through several pine trees, I could see two praying mantises scuttling back and forth, guarding the main path. Ooh, gulp. I slowed down and crept quieter to keep from alerting the clunk. The invisible wall had jutted in with no warning, and I clunked my head against it. One of the creatures turned. I stayed very still because maybe praying mantis aliens are like T-Rexes, and they can only see things that move. Squawk! Nope, bad theory, bad, bad, bad theory. The creature had the creature that had heard me was now standing on his back legs and making a creepy squawking noise while the other one charged. As I ran as fast as my little legs would take me, while climbing over boulders and dodging trees, I kept reaching backwards and wildly blasting with my, blasting my attackers. Blast, blast, squawk! Blast, blast, squawk! It may not surprise you to learn that the creatures with six nimble insect legs were quickly gaining on the bounce uh, on the off balance person who did not post a mild time to be proud of in gym class the previous week. Blast, blast, squawk! Blast, blast, shriek! Got one! Unfortunately, I had no time to celebrate because the mantis that I had vaporized was replaced with another one who'd I'd heard his one who heard his battle cry, and then another. I found a path and continued running and blasting wildly behind me, really wishing I'd brought my inhaler. But who brings an inhaler into a video game? I blamed Eric. 
he should have texted, come over. You're not going to believe this. Maybe bring your inhaler or perhaps come over unless you don't want to get chased by man-eating aliens through the mountains. You know, just give me a choice. As I ran, I blasted. The terrain on either side of the path grew higher and higher until I found myself running through the bottom of a canyon. Praying mantises were now jumping into the canyon behind me, joining their brothers in stampede of death. Suddenly, the canyon opened up into a big bowl with 50-foot walls, a dead end. I ran to the end, turned around, and started blasting. By this time, I was getting better at picking them off. But it was too late. For every alien I vaporized, three more were pour through the canyon opening. The horde got closer and closer, 30 yards away, then 20, then just 15 feet. I continued shooting with my eye, closing my eyes, preparing to meet my end. Then a chorus of shrieks. I opened my eyes to see the blinding light of five aliens getting vaporized at once. Before I could figure out what was happening, the wave behind them also disappeared. Jesse! I looked up. Eric. Eric Conrad, looking exactly like a superhero, was blasting away from the top of a cliff. Hey, buddy, what do you think? This is the worst. Get me out of here, I screamed. Glad you're having fun. Try charging up to full blast. I did what he said, and it worked. I got a whole group with one blast. Eric and I worked together on clearing the entire canyon of aliens. After five minutes, only the only group left was three stragglers coming through the opening. I turned around to watch Eric line up the shot. And that's when I saw it. Sneaking up behind Eric was a jet black creature that looked a little more alien than praying mantis with five legs and one long blaster arm. Eric! He looked at me. The alien lowered his blaster. Watch out! The alien pulled the trigger and my best friend in the whole world vaporized before my eyes. Chapter four, reality mode. Eric had been my best friend since the first grade. The first time I saw him, his parents were unloading the moving truck while Eric ran back and forth in the front yard wearing a coonskin cap and spinning the tail with his head. I finally went over to ask him what he was doing. He said he was trying to fly and was getting close. I believed him because I was in the first grade. And all first graders believe that you're this close to flying. I decided right then to stick with this strange flying child and learn his ways. For the next six years, I did stick with him through everything. We never learned how to fly, but we did learn how to jump pretty high off of homemade bike ramps and start fires with magnifying glasses and scare each other during backyard sleepovers until we were afraid to go with until we were afraid to go into the house to pee. And now, he's gone. I blasted the alien that blasted Eric, finished off the group coming through the canyon, climbed the rock, climbed the clock, climbed the rock wall to the spot where he'd been standing and sobbed the whole time. When I finally got to the top, I stood over the black spot where my best friend had been. There was nothing left. Nothing to remember, my friend. And what would I tell his parents? How would I even get back to his parents? I stared at the spot for a few minutes longer, trying to wipe the tears away from my eyes and forgetting that one of my hands was now a blaster and whacking myself in the face over and over and not caring. <sighs> what you looking at, buddy? I whipped around. Eric? What are you... I thought you, I saw you. Yeah, I got vaporized. Then how are you here? I don't understand. Hold on. Are you a ghost? No, dumb dumb. This is a video game. I just went back to the beginning of the level. I gave him a weird look. Wait, <laughs> you thought I actually died? 
I continued my weird look. That would be crazy. That's not how video games work. You get killed once and you're done with the video game forever? <laughs> Just throw it in the trash? No, you go back to the beginning of the level and start again. It doesn't even hurt, see? Eric pointed his blaster at me. My eyes got wide. No, 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 zing. And just like that, I found myself back at the beginning of the level, staring down, charging, praying mantises. One second later, zing, Eric showed up too. And one second after that, shriek, Eric blasted the alien. Come on, Eric said as he started walking down the path. Hey, I caught up with him. You going to explain what all this is about? Oh, yeah, Eric's eyes lit up. Isn't this the greatest thing in the world? Can you believe it? No, definitely not. Is this real? Eric shrugged. I think so. Earlier this afternoon, I finally beat the game. At the end of the credits, the, the, a screen came up that said I'd unlocked something called reality mode and asked if I wanted to try it. When I said yes, I got sucked in, like you did. But how did you text me? Huh? I asked how you texted me. Wait, Eric said as he dragged me into a small cave. Watch this and he shot a small blast into the snow to get the alien's attention. Soon, one came over, then two, then 50 or more. They were all trying to reach us, but they were all too big to fit into the tiny opening. Finally, Eric charged his blaster and vaporized the whole group in one shot. After the blinding light, we heard a chime and saw a mechanical part flow, float over the snow. Eric whoo -hooed, ran over and clipped it onto his blaster. Now I can launch grenades, he shouted. Wonderful. Can you answer my question? I don't think you're grasping the coolness of the situation here. And I don't think you're grasping that we are stuck in a world with aliens. No, we're not stuck, Eric said as he started walking. Really? Come on, I wouldn't have invited you in if there weren't a way out. So what happened? Thunk, thunk. I waited patiently while Eric shot grenades at two big trees. The grenades detonated in a flash of light and the tops of the trees disappeared. Eric nodded approvingly. At the end of each level, there's a portal that takes you back to real life. I finished two levels and then I decided to go back and tell you about it. I knew that nothing I could say would convince you to come here because you're such a baby. Thunk, thunk. Eric took out, and took out the alien that had shot him earlier. So I just had to let you discover it for yourself. He turned and smiled. So what do you think? I think this is horrible. Eric's face fell a little bit. What? What do you mean, what? I have no idea what's going on. And Eric reached over my shoulder to blast a praying mantis running behind me. All of a sudden, I get sucked into this thing. And then I think I threw up. And you know how much I hate throwing up? While maintaining eye contact, Eric held his hand out and launched the grenade at two aliens trying to sneak up on us to the left. And then... This army guy starts yelling at me and making me do all this weird stuff. That was the tutorial, Eric interrupted. Huh? Eric held his blaster in the air and shot. A flying thing fell to the ground behind him. The tutorial. It's there to teach you how to play the game. That sergeant's not real. He's like a robot that's only pro programmed to do one thing. Whatever. And now everything's trying to kill us. And I have math homework that's due on Monday. Listen, Eric said as he hunched, launched two more grenades just for fun. I understand that you're a little annoyed right now. Real aliens are trying to eat me. But you're with me. And I know this game backwards and forwards. If you stick close, I promise you'll be fine. Who knows? You might even have a little fun. I glared at him. 
I'll let you shoot a grenade. I glared some more. Eric unclipped his gr grenade launcher and put it on my arm. Try it. I squeezed. Two grenades thunk thunked out of my arm and vaporized a praying mantis that I didn't see sneaking up next to us. Wasn't that great? Eric exclaimed. It was. It was very great. Hmm. Come on, we've got an alien base to defeat, Eric said as he ran ahead. Eric blasted and hooped his way through the rest of the level, and I launched grenades willy-nilly. By the time we'd blasted our last alien, we were both out of breath. This is it, Eric said, and he led me through a final door inside the alien base. Inside, we found a room with three glowing portals. One said, replay. Another said, home. And the last said, level two. All right, I'll let you keep going, I said as I took a step toward home portal. Wait, Eric grabbed me. Don't you want to keep going? No, I told you I want to go home. One more level. Nope. The next one is in Hawaii. Sorry. I have jetpacks. I squinted at him. Jetpacks. We stared at each other some more, and Eric nodded and nodded, and me squinting. What? We stared at each other some more. Eric nodded, and me squinting. Finally, I rolled my eyes. One more level. Woohoo! We walked past the home portal into level two. It was the worst decision of my life. Saving progress. Do not close book while saving icon is on the page. Chapter 5. Jetpack Joyride. I probably don't need to tell you this, but jetpacks are amazing. This is something I learned firsthand when Eric led me to a spinning jetpack at the top of the waterfall right outside the porthole. Go ahead, strap in. I strapped on the jetpack trying hard not to act like this was the coolest moment of my life. Okay, now what? Jump off. Excuse me? Jump off the waterfall. I looked over the edge. The bottom of the waterfall was at least 200 feet. Nope. Nobody, nobody, nope. I can't launch from here. I mean, can't I just launch from here? You can, but it's more fun if you're falling first. Just press the button in your right hand to blast off and remember to land when it starts blinking. Wait, when what starts blinking? Exactly, now go. With that, Eric pushed me off the edge of the waterfall. I've only tried the big diving board at the rec center, at the rec center pool once. Last year, Eric finally got me to climb to the top. At the top, I told him I changed my mind about jumping, so he, helped by pushing me off. I landed on my stomach and got a red mark that lasted the whole day. The lifeguard kicked Eric out of the pool and I punched him in the stomach as hard as I could to show him what my landing felt like. But neither of those things stopped him from cracking about it for the rest of the, cackling about it for the rest of the week. Now here we were again, me falling into a watery grave and Eric laughing above. If I ever survived, I would do a lot more than punch him in the stomach. As the river rushed toward me, I tried to remember what Eric had said. Do I push this button? No, maybe this whoosh. The jetpack roared to life and I stopped falling. And for half a second, I found myself suspended in midair. I noticed the impossibly green rainforest around me and the roaring river below and the ocean in the distance and thought that nothing could be more beautiful. And then I screamed into the air like an out-of-control bottle rocket. Ah! I blew past Eric, giving me the thumbs up at the top of the waterfall. You got it! I certainly didn't have it. I was spinning wildly and super close to upchucking again. 
but after 30 seconds of doing a perfect impre impression of an untied balloon losing all of its air, I finally started getting the hang of it. What followed was the best minute of my life as I flew around Hawaii by jetpack. I flew around Hawaii by jetpack. If there's any cooler sentence in the world, I can't think of it right now. I was having so much fun flying around Hawaii by jetpack. Sorry, I just wanted to say it again. That I forgot about Eric's blinking warning. Then, 500 feet above a volcano, my jetpack started sputtering. I looked back. The fuel just wasn't just running out, the jetpack itself was disappearing and reappearing on my back. I panicked and looked for a place to land, but it was too late. The jetpack disappeared for good. Oh no, no! I screamed as I fell toward the mouth of the volcano. I was so mad at Eric. Falling off a 15 foot diving board is one thing, Falling into a pit of boiling lava is quite another. But just before I hit the lava, lava, everything went white. I found myself standing next to Eric at the top of the waterfall again. Pretty cool, huh? Would it kill you to tell me what happens when the jetpack starts blinking? Eric laughed and strapped on the jetpack. Come on! Don't I get one? Yeah, it'll reappear in five, four, three, two. Another jetpack magically reappeared in its place. I strapped it on and we started flying in the air. Eric explained the plot of this particular level. Something really stupid about aliens using Pearl Harbor to launch their attacks and blah, blah, blah. I couldn't play, pay too much attention because I was flying around Hawaii by jetpack. We landed on a secluded beach, found, by, found more jetpacks and took off again. When we got into the air, we were joined by two eagle-sized wasps. I nervously glanced over. One of them made eye contact and glared at me. What are those? I yelled to Eric. Oh, those are dumb, do this he said as he looped high into the air, circling behind one of the wasps and blasting it. I don't think I can do that. It's not hard, Eric said. All you have to do is this. While Eric talked, the remaining wasps' eyes started glowing red. Eric, what is that? Quick, pull up! I tried, but it was too late. The wasp zapped me with a laser. Ouch! Eric blasted the wasp and grabbed me. Come on! We landed on a black sand beach. At least, I think the sand was black. It was hard to tell because everything was glowing red and pulsing. Here you go. Try this, Eric said, and he led me to a suitcase with a red cross symbol on it. I reached out to grab it. The instant I touched it, it disappeared in a flash of white, and my vision cleared up, and a warm tingle went through my body. Ooh, what was that? A medical kit. Anytime you get hurt, just find one, okay? Okay. You ready to keep going? I smiled. Let's do this. Eric and I spent the day blasting our way through Hawaii. We cleared out the enemy patrols on the beaches, collected new laser upgrades for our blasters, and sunk all the spaceships at Pearl Harbor. At sunset, we landed on a cliff overlooking the ocean. See that island out there, Eric asked. I squinted. Yeah, I think so. There's something really cool on it. You want to check it out? What is it? But Eric had already strapped on a jetpack and jumped off the cliff. You'll see! I sighed, waited five seconds, and strapped on my own jetpack. Wait up! I pushed to catch up with him, but Eric was about 50 feet ahead of me. 30 seconds into our flight, the island se still seemed a couple of miles away. I don't think we're going to make it, I yelled ahead. Just then, a huge shadow fell over the ocean, and then, screech! 
I looked up to see a bat the size of a small airplane swoop over Eric and grab him with two massive claws. Eric! At that moment, I felt claws dig into my own back. Chapter 6 Boss Battle With Eric and me in their talons, the bats flew toward a sh the tiny island. As we got older, as we got closer, the speck of land came into focus. Just a, beach the si just a beach the size of a small backyard with a single palm tree in the middle. When we reached the island, the bats dive-bombed, then whoomp, dumped us onto the beach and soared off. I brushed the sand out of my clothes. Was that supposed to happen? Of course. I walked toward Eric. We have to talk. I put my finger on his chest. You can't keep surprising me with... My voice trailed off because as I talked, the shadow fell over Eric. I slowly turned to see what could it be this time. A sand monster. Of course. Why not? Behind me, a sand monster made, made of sand rose from the ground. It kept growing and growing, first the size of a one-story home, then two stories, then as tall as one of those old houses with the big attic on top. His face formed into angry eyes and massive fangs. I jabbed my thumb toward the furious monster behind me. Want to tell me what this is? The boss. I don't know what that means. This is a video game. Every few levels end with a big boss battle. You're speaking gibberish. Eric rolled his eyes. If you blast him enough times in the glowing spot on his back or belly, he'll disappear and the portals will pop up. Fine. I'll be happy to go home where people can't constantly be tricking me and pushing me off waterfalls. Fine. Fine. I marched in front of the sand monster, and it roared like a dinosaur. Oh, oh, I'm real scared, I said as I blasted it in the mouth. What are you going to do, eat me? I charged up to full blast and shot it in the belly. It fell over, shrieking. Then it grew bigger and angrier. Go ahead, eat me. It won't even hurt. I'll just come right back here and we'll do the whole thing again because it's a stupid video game and video games are just stupid. Oh, shut up, Eric yelled from across the level. What was that? Just save it. You know you're having fun. Oh, really? You know what would be fun? I dodged a spiky sand ball that the monster threw at me. It's sand, and you might be saying soft is sa sand is soft. How could a sand ball be spiky? I know, right? Video games are so dumb. What would be fun in having a real friend who explains things and lets me choose for myself? Eric blasted the monster in the back, and it fell over again. What, so I'm not a real friend now? The monster grew so big that I couldn't see Eric anymore. So I just started yelling at the monster's belly, hoping that Eric could hear me on the other side. I don't know. Real friends trust each other. I could e hear Eric charging up his blaster. I charged mine too. Real friends know each other, Eric said. And this friend knows that you never want to have fun or make decisions for yourself. So sometimes he has to be pushed. He has to push you a little bit. Well, maybe you don't know me as well as you think you do. I blasted the monster's belly. Unknown to me, Eric blasted its back at the same time. In slow motion, the monster looked at me, then turned around to look at Eric. Then a funny thing happened. Its head started twitching unnaturally, and the monster's head snapped from er me to Eric and back again. It started to roar, or at least... It started trying to roar. Roar, 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 roar. It sounded like a lawnmower trying to start. Roar, 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 roar. Suddenly, the sand monster and island disappeared. Everything faded away, and we were back, and we were left in a bright blue room. On the wall 
words started to appear as if they were being typed. Error 2302. Activate Hindenburg. Oh, activate Hindenburg protocol? Yes or no? Okay, I said to Eric. What's the Hindenburg protocol? His face went kind of white. I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I mean, it's never done anything like this before. Should we pick no? Yeah, probably. I walked to the wall and touched no. The message disappeared. Eric and I looked at each other and waited for something to happen. Then the message started typing out again. Error 2302. Activate Hindenburg Protocol. Yes or no? I guess we don't have a choice, Eric said. He touched yes, and the room faded away. The island and ocean came back, but no more monster. That was weird, I said. Yeah, super weird. Three portals started pushing through the ground in front of us. Why don't we both get out of here, Eric asked. We walked toward the middle portal, the home one, but stopped short once it began revealing itself. Something was wrong. The other two portals glowed bright blue and purple like before, but not the middle one. The middle one was dull gray, and it was locked. Chapter 7 What now? Eric backed up. I, I, I don't know. We're trapped? I, I mean, it, I'm sure there's a way out. Oh, really? I blasted the locked door. Nothing. I chucked a grenade at it. Didn't even make a dent. Then I blasted Eric. He reappeared on the other side of the island. I started marching toward him. This is your fault! And I blasted him again. He disappeared and reappeared again. Now what are we going to do? Another blast. Nobody knows we're in here. Blast. And even if they did, what would they do? Reprogram the game and erase us? Blast. We're supposed to go on a field trip to the science center next week, and I really wanted to go to the science center. Blast. This blast is blast. All blast. Your blast. Fault. Blast. Blast. By the end of my little speech, Eric was just hanging his head while I blasted him to the video game death over and over and over again. I'm sorry, he finally said. I glared and blasted him again. It is all my fault. I shouldn't have made you come without asking. He plopped onto the sand. I sat down next to him. No, you shouldn't have. But I did have a choice, and I decided to keep going, so I guess we're in this together. Eric didn't say anything. He just kept his head down and started drawing a sad face in the sand. Except Eric is really bad at drawing, so the face looked more like a melty pizza. Come on, I picked him up. Let's find a way out of here. We walked through the replay portal and reappeared back on top of the waterfall at the beginning of the level. Okay, I said. When we got into the video game, it felt like we were falling, right? So maybe we just need to jetpack high enough to, to escape. Eric shook his head. Won't work. We'll bonk our heads on the ceiling first. I looked up at the clear blue sky above me. Okay, Mr. Positive, what ceiling? The whole world is way too big to put into a video game. So programmers make it look like their levels stretch on forever. But they put these invisible walls and ceilings to keep you from leaving. I remembered the invisible fence in the Rockies. Okay, okay, but maybe there's a portal hidden somewhere. Eric shrugged. Well, grab a jetpack and let's see. We scoured every inch of our fake Hawaiian island. Eric was right. It was a lot smaller than I first thought. In a single afternoon, we had jetpacked all over every acre of rainforest, trekked across every beach, and even hiked up the volcano. No hidden portals. At Pearl Harbor, we were while we were looking for an unlocked spaceship we could use to escape, 
Eric spoke up. Do you think they'll have a mark day for us at school? Mark Whitman was a kid in our class who had disappeared last month. Word around town that he had drowned trying to swim across the Mahogany River after a storm. Everyone pitched in to find him. They even brought in these special boats to look up and down the river. When they couldn't find his body after two weeks, they finally decided to hold a memorial service at school. They set up a giant, a gigantic picture of Mark on the stage, and his big blue eyes stared at us while a bunch of people got up to say nice things about him. Then we got to go home early. I remember being sad, but also a little excited that we got a day off. I got mad at myself for feeling like that. Stop it, I told Eric. It's not going to happen. I mean, you didn't tell your parents where you were going, did you? I was silent. And my parents were only going to be gone for an hour or two. They have no idea. How long have we been in here? Half a day? A whole day? They're probably already looking for us. I knew he was right. My mom would probably think I'd gotten kidnapped. And my dad would say Eric and I were hiding in the woods. I glanced back at Eric. He looked like he was going to start crying. Come on, I said. Let's go back to the sand monster island. We jumped off the cliff from before, jet-packed over the ocean, let the, two, let the big bats take us to the island. Sure enough, the sand monster was back. We teamed up and defeated him in no time. This time... He didn't start glitching when we beat him. He just shrieked and disappeared into the island. In his place, the portals reappeared. But now, instead of three, there were four. That's it, I said, pointing to the fourth portal. That's our way out. Eric shook his head. Nope, that one just sends you back to previous levels. We took a closer look at the locked home portal. Wait. Wait a second. Look at this. He ran to the home portal. It was still gray and locked, but over the lock was now written level 20. What does that mean? I asked. Eric turned and smiled. There are 20 levels in the game. Okay. Jesse, this door unlocks when we beat the game. Okay, friends, that was chapter one through seven. Chapter eight through 14 is going to be on the next recording. I hope you're enjoying the story. I am. <laughs>